Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And right now, 4.30, the lace involving Pfizer vaccine getting full FDA approval and the effort to get more Americans vaccinated. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, 78 degrees to start your day. Really not too bad this morning, but we're expecting it to heat up just a bit. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, August 24th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you had a good Monday and a good start to your week. And before we get to weather and traffic, just a reminder, it's another big back to school day for some students in our viewing area. So Comal ISD is back in session again. We hope they all have a great first day. Don't forget everything you need to know. Uh, just head to back to school, uh, ksat.com slash back to school. And of course, I think by pickup time, it'll be hot again. Oh, yes, and the lines were long at schools all around San Antonio yesterday for pickup in the afternoon, and it was another very warm one. 96 again yesterday, so, you know, after the trend being below average for almost two months, with minor exceptions here and there, we've been above average ever since, and it's going to stay that way. We still have some relief down the road, rain chances still down the road, but uh, today, no, we got our morning clouds hanging around and 79. We're actually up just a hint with temperatures this morning and also with the humidity. Dew points are just up a degree or two here and there. So, well, especially around, say, Canyon Lake, Stinson, and uh, Randolph, you feel the humidity a lot more this morning when you walk outside. So we do have somewhat of a heat index, 81 Stinson, 82 at the airport, and 83 up the road at Canyon Lake. Mold is on the low side. And by the way, uh, CPS Energy is... Um, asking you to cut back on energy usage if possible between two and seven o'clock uh, this afternoon because a lot of folks are going to be getting those air conditioners fired up so even just to crank it up a couple of notches there that would help out 76 this morning most the cloudy skies and later on today 97 for a high temperature and it's about the same situation tomorrow then the slow decline in temperatures begins and then the slow increase in rain chances starts by about the mid latter part of the week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Mark, Steph. Thank you, Mike. In your latest news this morning, a former Bear County deputy is behind bars for allegedly assaulting an inmate. BCSO tells us 42 year old Jaime Soto is charged with official oppression. Investigators say camera footage was reviewed back in December. An internal affairs investigation was then completed in June of this year, and Soto resigned a few days later. He is now in custody. He was with the sheriff's office for 14 years. And when it comes to the coronavirus, here in San Antonio, hospitalizations remain on the rise. 90% of the cases are among the unvaccinated. This morning, 1,466 COVID patients are in local hospitals. 412 are in the ICU and 279 are on ventilators. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton no longer suing SAISD for its vaccine mandate. Paxton sued the district Thursday, however, was dropped after Pfizer received full approval from the Food and Drug Administration yesterday. The Attorney General initially argued that the district violated Texas Governor Greg Abbott's executive order that prohibited governmental entities from mandating vaccinations that only had emergency youth authorization. The mandate is now legal. Uh, since it's been approved by the FDA. This morning, the FDA approving the Pfizer vaccine, and health officials are hoping the more rigorous approval process convinces more Americans to get the vaccine. This, as the U.S. is now reporting more than 170,000 new COVID cases a day. ABC's Dan Lieberman has the latest. This morning, Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine now fully approved by the FDA. This Ohio woman finally getting the shot after waiting for that approval. I was scared to get the COVID shot. Officials hoping the FDA approval will give reassurance to about 82 million eligible but still unvaccinated people in this country to get the shot. The FDA director declaring the approval process extremely rigorous. We've heard false claims that thousands of people have died from the vaccine. Let me be clear, these claims are simply not true. Getting a COVID-19 vaccine can save your life. The White House saying businesses and institutions should now have the confidence to issue vaccine mandates. If you're a business leader, a nonprofit leader, a state or local leader, I call on you now to do that, require it. The Pentagon preparing to require the shot for more than 1.3 million active duty troops. New York City mandating the vaccine for all school employees. And in California, college students now required to get their shots before attending in-person classes. The call to get vaccinated more urgent than ever, 
as more Americans die of COVID, some 738 every day now. Before we intubate them, almost their last words are begging us for a vaccine. By that time, it's already too late. As children head back to the classroom, the CDC director telling ABC News more data is still needed before kids under 12 can get the shot, maybe by November. The best way to keep our children under the age of 12 safe is to vaccinate all the people who are around them um, and to have them wear masks when they attend schools. Dan Lieberman, ABC News, New York. United Airlines' first flight with evacuees from Afghanistan landed on U.S. soil on Monday with roughly 340 people on board. The Boeing 777 touched down at Dulles International Airport in Virginia. At the end, it was the end of a more than 14-hour flight from an airbase in Doha, Qatar, with a refueling stop at Ramstein Air Base in Germany. The U.S. military chartered the flight through an agreement between the airline and the government known as the Civil Air Reserve Fleet. Andrew Cuomo, no longer the governor of the state of New York. The official transfer of power to Kathy Hochul happening at the stroke of midnight. The Democrat from Western New York is the state's first female governor. She's taking control of a state government desperate to get back to business after months of distractions over sexual harassment allegations against Cuomo. Cuomo submitted his resignation letter late last Monday. President Joe Biden welcomed the Seattle Storm to the White House, paying tribute to the team's 2020 WNBA championship. In beating Las Vegas last year, the Storm tied the league record of four championship wins. Three of the players were also on the U.S. Olympic team this year. Yesterday's event was the first time in years that a WNBA team has visited the White House. 436, about 78 degrees. Kids are heading back to college, and that means it's time to pay up. Tuition deadlines are approaching, and if you look now, you might be able to save some money. We're going to tell you how coming up. Another Cowboys player added the list of those in COVID protocol. We have details coming up in morning sports. And taking a look outside with live cam, a little humid, but not too bad out there. We'll just prepare for the heat this afternoon and pretty much all this week. We'll be right back. Now for the first time Welcome back now to Morning Sports. You can add the Cowboys C.D. Lamb to those on, on the list in COVID protocol. And the talented receiver is not alone. He's joined by defensive back Malik, Hook, Malik Hooker and Israel Mukuyamu. It's after new defensive coordinator Dan Quinn and defensive tackle Carlos Watkins had to leave AT&T Stadium about 90 minutes prior to kickoff before Saturday's 2014 loss to the Texans due to health and safety protocols. Now to some high school football here in San Antonio. Brennan Reagan will battle let out in a highly anticipated matchup Friday night. The Brennan Bears welcome back 14 starters, eight on offense, six on defense from a team that finished 10 and two, seven and one in district. Texas Football Magazine ranks the Bears at number 17 in the state class 6A right behind them. Number 17, the Reagan Rattlers. They have 14 starters back as well. Seven each on offense and defense on a team that went 9-2 and two last year and running the table in District 28-6A at 8-0. It all adds up to one heck of a season opener Friday evening. Kickoff will be at 7 p.m. at Ferris Stadium. And the Madison Mavericks will be taking on the Clement Buffaloes at Lenhoff Stadium this Thursday night. The Mavs are returning six starters, each on eight on offense and defense for head coach Blaine Peterson off a team that made it to the playoffs after going five and three in a very difficult district 28-6A. For the Clements Buffaloes, head coach Jaron Johnson has 11 starters returning, mainly on defense with eight off a team that did not make the playoffs last year. Kick off Thursday night at 7. You can watch it live on MeTV. Here's a look at some of the other games we're bringing you live on MeTV this season. For more high school football coverage, head on over to KSAT.com. And time now it's 441 and about 78 degrees out there. College is expensive, but you might be able to save some money on tuition if you hurry. After the break, some tips on to help you out now that the kids are heading back to college. The latest details in the drama at Jeopardy! Who's filling in on the evening show until a new host is named as Mike Richards continues running the show even after resigning as host. And welcome back. It's about 4.44. Sony has announced a temporary host for the weekday version of Jeopardy! after Mike Richards stepped down days after being named the new permanent host. ABC's Janae Norman has the details in today's GMA First Look. Jeopardy! 
In this morning's GMA First Look, Jeopardy! announcing Big Bang Theory star Mayim Bialik as temporary host of the popular quiz show. Sony Pictures Television, the company that produces Jeopardy! telling ABC News Bialik is currently scheduled to tape three weeks of episodes, 15 episodes, adding that as we move forward with production on this season of Jeopardy! additional guest hosts will be announced. The announcement comes just days after the game show's executive producer Mike Richards stepped down from the permanent hosting role following inappropriate comments he made towards women on a podcast. It's going to be really, really awkward on that set for the time being. And if anything, uh, you know, it, it brings into question long term what the plan is going to be and how that show is going to be run. All that coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Janae Norman, ABC News, New York. Paying for college can be a challenge for many students. During the past year and a half, it got even tougher, but the pandemic was also a catalyst for change. As 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains, some new rules may make college costs and loans easier to manage. Ana Termaya does everything she can to help her son Russell pay for college. It's gotten a little bit easier as far as the payments in the beginning, the first year and a half, I had to take out loans, borrow from my mom. For a lot of people, the pandemic made it tougher to afford college, but the unprecedented times also spurred changes that can help. Many private schools whose enrollment was hurt by the pandemic are aggressively discounting tuition and fees to attract new students and retain current ones. On average, undergraduates got a record 48% discount on tuition and fees in the forms of scholarships and grants last school year from private schools. And Congress has given colleges a $36 billion pot of money to distribute in emergency financial grants, money you don't have to pay back, to students hurt by the pandemic. This aid will help keep people in school who are struggling financially and prevent them from going deeper into debt. The exact criteria for eligibility uh, will vary by school, so you should check with the financial aid office at your school to see how it works. As for student loans, the pause on payments has been extended to the end of January. And for students with total and permanent disabilities, the Department of Education has streamlined the process so those student loans are automatically discharged. If you think any of these situations apply to you, check with your loan servicer to make sure new rules are applied. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, we're kind of in a rut weather-wise. I mean, we have morning clouds and the sun kind of burns things through. It gets very warm in the afternoon, but I guess it could be hotter. Oh, that's true. We haven't actually officially reached the three numbers. <laughs> the, <triple. laughs> the dreaded just have triple to, the, digits. We're trying to, the, we're trying to the, dance around the it. The one and the zero. <laughs> so, no, we haven't officially out there uh, at the airport. We are in the trend now with above normal temperatures uh, by a couple of degrees here and there. We do see some changes, though, coming in uh, over the next, uh, well, not next necessarily the next few days, but by the, the weekend. We'll kind of say it like that. Anyway, uh, beautiful moon. Yeah, a couple of days past full, but it's still gorgeous out there. That's a nice thing. We still have clear skies usually as the moon is coming up and good uh, good moon gazing weather. And then those clouds move back on in here. Like Mark was talking about, we go through that same sort of cycle and not really anything is showing up on the uh, satellite picture or with radar at all. We still have this big clockwise rotation around the area and that's the high which is sitting on top of us and uh, Around the country, not really a heck of a lot going on. There are some pretty good storms up there to the uh, the north of us, but it is a just a good old fashioned kind of a uh, summertime weather pattern. The tropics are starting obviously to get a bit more active. Now, um, Henri is just kind of fizzle on out, moving up into uh, Canada and the North Atlantic. There are a couple of more spots that the Hurricane Center is keeping an eye on out here in the Atlantic Ocean and the Western, excuse me, Eastern Caribbean. That one there, another one out in the middle of the Atlantic, and then one further off over close to Africa. That next one there in the Caribbean is one we're going to keep an eye on as it traverses the Caribbean and then works its way in our direction by later on in the weekend. Now, the I, I guess not necessarily call it a controversy, but the, the question right now is what computer model to look at. And there's a bunch of different ones that we look at, but just to show you how things are taking different uh, different scenarios with this, here's the long range computer model, that one I was saying kind of 
paints things in with a broad brush. It does have a couple of uh, scattered showers around here, maybe uh, by Thursday, a few more on Friday, and then going into the weekend, we'll start to see a few more rain chances around here, and then especially Sunday and going into Monday. So this computer model has that working its way down to the south and staying primarily uh, well down in the southern portion of the state and then down there in Mexico and working off to the west. Then you get another computer model long range jumping into Monday. This one has it going up in toward Houston and then up in northern portions of the hill country by Tuesday. So two different computer models, two different solutions uh, to their long range forecast. So that's where we're still obviously very iffy as far as rain chances. Rain chances are going to be increasing, but exactly where the heaviest rain is, that's still a wait and see situation because it's still a week off and obviously a lot can change between now and then. 88 today at noon, partly cloudy skies and then plenty of sunshine out there. 97, of course, heat index readings are going to be well up into the hundreds again today and tomorrow. Pretty much the same thing. Then Thursday, a shower two, maybe a couple more on Friday as we see a few more clouds around here. Yes, the humidity is going to increase. Uh, it's a little tougher to heat up moist air, so keeps temperatures down with some extra cloud cover. So we stay then at or a little bit below normal mid 90s over the weekend, increasing rain chances and uh, better rain chances first of next week. All right, so starting maybe tomorrow, we start pushing people to get their cars washed and trucks <laughs> washed and everything. A group effort here, and yes. we could probably and increase we'll rain those rain chances, chances right? Yeah. Good idea. Well, maybe by Friday there'll be 50 percent. That would be a great idea. It worked last time on the oh, on that Sunday morning with Luis when he washed the car. Oh, it did? Yeah, yes. it did. Okay. Not, not this past Sunday, the Sunday before, and we got a lot of rain. So maybe I'll tell, just tell him to go out and wash the car. To, to wash yeah. the car. All right, so the pressure is off all of you. <laughs> We're going to rely on her husband <laughs> to get us through and get us drenched this yeah. weekend. And he doesn't know it yet. I'll tell him later. Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you, Mike. Right now it is 451, about 78 degrees. And a remake of the late 90s high school rom-com plus the creator of the office says he wants to do more with that show. Those details and more next in today's Morning Spotlight. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three this morning, 959 Fireball 6. Your daily four numbers, 5946 Fireball 8. Cash 5, 12, 16, 19, 24, 28. And your Texas two-step, 1, 2, 4, 29. Bonus ball, 31. From TikTok to Netflix, Addison Rae's first movie comes out this week. The social media star shows off her acting skills in He's All That, a remake of the late 90s high school rom-com She's All That. And the 20-year-old tells me that before her TikTok fame, Hollywood wasn't really part of the plan. I was going to study journalism and hopefully, you know, be a reporter and be on TV. And that's kind of what my goal was. But I didn't really know how possible um, anything else was. He's All That hits Netflix on Friday. Could we all be going back to the office? Not the place you work, but the everybody. NBC TV show. NBC Universal content chief Susan Robner tells Deadline that if the office creator Greg Daniels wants to do more, they're standing by. But currently, there are no reboot plans in the works. And happy birthday to Dave Chappelle. The comedy legend is 48 today, while Selma director Ava DuVernay is 49. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Right now, it's about 456 and 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, free COVID antibody therapy. Details on who is recommended to get it and where to do that here in San Antonio. It was a brutal murder that took place inside a San Antonio barber shop last year. A transgender woman killed another woman left severely injured. That's coming up in this morning's South Texas Crime Stories. And a quick check of the roads with Transguy. There's a look at Highway 281 at San Pedro. Things are moving and a little shot there of Loop 410 at Broadway. We're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, a man is sent to the hospital after police say he is shot at on the city's west side. We have a few details on what police say led up to that. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. If you can do those outdoor things right now because it's only 78 degrees, it's only going to go up. Except for outdoor things that are noisy. Don't do those. Well, now. right. Don't wake up your neighbors. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it is Tuesday. It is August 24th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, don't mow the lawn or do something noisy like that. But you can take out the dog at 
5 a.m. That's right, you can. And you may want to work on the lawn between now and this weekend because Mike says rain is back in our forecast. Yeah, not a great chance late in the week, but we'll start to see a few more showers developing here and there, and then rain chances will start to improve as the uh, the weekend rolls on. So yeah, by uh, by about the Saturday, if you haven't gotten it cut, that's going to be a pretty good idea. This morning, 79 degrees, and the dew point is up compared to yesterday, which means it is warmer. It is more humid out there this morning, and we are going to make it up into the uh, mid to upper 90s again and that trend for above normal temperatures normal high right now is 95 so we're going to be a few degrees above that later on this afternoon the aquifer did Da, 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 drop down. Seven, wow, it's been dropping down quite a bit over the past couple of days, down seven tenths of a foot in the past uh, 24 on yesterday's reading, I should say. And the allergens mold is on the low side, and that's probably going to continue to stay on the low side, given the fact we don't have any uh, rain in the forecast for at least the next couple of days. With the, those warm temperatures and that higher humidity, we've got somewhat of a heat index right now. 82 is what it feels like out there at the airport, 80 Canyon Lake. So nothing really off the charts. Not like you want to, you know, open up the door and turn around, and go back inside uh, with the humidity, but it's still uh, enough out there. By the way, it is a, a CPS peak energy demand day, so if you can lower your energy usage between two and seven o'clock this afternoon. This morning, warm, humid. This afternoon, sunny, hot. Tomorrow, more of the same, sunny and hot. So we're back into that, you know, the usual old summer pattern. Then that pattern is going to start to change as we go into the latter part of the week. Temperatures will now it's not going to be a huge drop in temperatures. They'll make a slow decline down to about normal, maybe slightly below that. And rain chances will start to go up just a couple of pop up showers here and there to finish up the work week and then those better rain chances over the weekend. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos is in the house or studio, if you will. What's going on? Sir. Hey, good morning, Mike, and I'm just trying to find the right day to wash my car. But you know, if you're going to be getting down into your car in the next few moments, Loop 410 at Broadway, uh, things are looking pretty good right now. US 90 at Montgomery uh, do have some construction out here near US 90 that is causing a little bit of a slowdown, but we're not seeing any big issues out on the road right now. Just a few folks getting their morning started early with us, so no need to rush to get to where you need to be. You can grab that cup of coffee and get there on time. Uh, taking a look at the map, yeah, we see a lot of green on the screen this morning. And as I mentioned, we do have some construction happening out there off US 90 looks like it's going westbound out toward Castroville. We'll get to that a little bit later in this show, but for now the construction has cleared up. Uh, you can take a look right now. These inbound times are also looking pretty good. If you're coming in from I 10 and Bernie 25 minutes, same goes for 281 and Bulverde 25 minutes to the downtown area and 26 minutes. If you are going to be traveling in from New Braunfels on 35 roads are looking pretty good so far. We're keeping a close eye on things and we'll give you updates on gas prices and that construction happening out towards US 90. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, one man is in the hospital after a shooting on the west side of town. It happened around 1030 last night in the 300 block of North Zarzamora. Police tell us the victim was walking to a gas station when someone drove by and started shooting. The man was hit in the leg but was able to call for help. He was taken to University Hospital. Now to where San Antonio stands when uh, when it comes to COVID-19 hospitalizations and that continues to be on the rise. 90% of the cases are among the unvaccinated. This morning, 1,466 COVID patients are in local hospitals. 412 are in the ICU and 279 are on ventilators. Hospitalizing unvaccinated people is costing the U.S. healthcare system billions of dollars, according to some analysts. A Kaiser Family Foundation report found the average cost of COVID hospitalizations is around $20,000. Foundation also looked at government data and found that 113,000 hospitalizations could have been prevented in June and July. That means more than $2 billion could have been saved during those two months if those people had been vaccinated. The foundation says these figures are likely in understatement of the entire burden on the health care system. And following the FDA giving full approval for the Pfizer vaccine, we asked people on Facebook if their stance on getting vaccinated has changed. Some had already made up their minds saying they will never get it. Others explained they still want to wait and others still say they're happy that they already got it. You can also take part in the poll on our Facebook page and you can check out a breakdown in the difference between emergency use authorization and full FDA approval that is online on our website at ksat.com. Well, more than 850 people have received a monoclonal antibody through a regional infusion center at Freeman Coliseum. 
That is since the center opened earlier this month. The FDA emergency approved therapy is free and highly recommended people who are in the high risk category and just got a positive COVID-19 test. Patients need a doctor's referral, but those without a doctor can call the center's hotline to be screened over the phone. You also do not need insurance. If you have one of the risk factors, you need to get in touch with a physician and get that referral done and don't wait. And you need to do it within 10 days. Now grab a pen. I've got a number for you here coming up. The outpatient process takes about two hours to complete. The hotline to call is 1-800-742-5990. Again, 1-800-742-5990. Head to ksat.com for more information. And time now is 5.05 and it's about 78 degrees out there. Instagram ditching the swipe up gesture and stories still ahead on GMSA, what it will soon be replaced with. Plus, why the game has changed for institutions like University Hospital, who have been waiting for the Pfizer vaccine to be fully approved. And outside with live cam, waking up in the upper 70s yet again. Lots and lots of morning clouds out there, but not rain in sight right now. We'll get an update on those rainfall chances as we go into the weekend. And Mike has a pretty case at Connect picture for you. For many organizations, the new Pfizer approval is the last piece to fall in place for vaccination mandates. Ursula Perry explains why this changes the game for institutions like University Hospital, who've been waiting for the full go ahead. No more emergency use. The number one reason many hesitated, no longer on the table. You may now see organizations that hesitated too, now implementing vaccine mandates upon their staff and maybe even their clients. I do think uh, certainly in our area, there, there are several uh, other organizations that will now consider uh, making it mandatory simply because that was a, a particular concern. Uh, and I think that's a good thing to help us sort of close the gap. University Hospital is on the front lines of why it's so crucial. While caring for the COVID sick, it could not mandate vaccination among its staff because it is a state-funded organization. Now there may be some wiggle room to implement a new standard. We are actively looking at as a possibility. There are certain uh, limitations through Governor Abbott's executive order that we believe were real predicated on uh, the emergency use authorization that may allow us even as a, uh, a state sponsored institution to be able to do so. Other hospital systems have done so, including Baptist Health System as well. This could also queue up city and county government, setting the bar higher on their staffs as well. Currently, 93% of all of the patients hospitalized with COVID-19 at University Hospital are unvaccinated, and they have the most severe form of the disease. Another stat from Dr. Alsip, everyone who has died of COVID-19 since June has been unvaccinated as well. Now that the Pfizer vaccination has received full FDA approval, you can expect a new brand name to emerge. Just one of the benefits of moving past emergency use authorization. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Ursula Perry. Thank you, Ursula. 511, 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, Facebook is bringing back a popular feature to its main app and see how Virgin Hyperloop's speedy pod slinging tube will transport you. And next, a brutal crime happening at the height of the pandemic right here in San Antonio. We're hearing about a barbershop murder in this week's South Texas Crime Stories. 513, it was a brutal attack and murder that shocked all of us last year. It took place inside a San Antonio barbershop. One woman was left severely injured and a transgender woman was dead. Erica Hernandez takes a look back at this crime in the latest South Texas crime stories. We do want to warn you that the details of this crime may be disturbing for some viewers. It was broad daylight on May 6th of last year when San Antonio police say a 20 year old transgender woman was killed at a Northwest side barbershop. At the height of the coronavirus pandemic, officers say 42 year old Damien Campbell walked inside a diesel barbershop on Bandera Road near Loop 1604. According to an arrest affidavit, three staff members were inside the shop, preparing to reopen after being shut down due to the pandemic. Details from that affidavit reveal that Campbell walked in to ask about making an appointment. He told staff he had to go back outside to get a credit card, but came back with a backpack, gun, and knife. That's when witnesses told police Campbell ordered the workers to the back of the shop. 
Allegedly, he choked Helly J. O'Regan until she was unconscious, then stabbed her to death. Investigators say a second employee also was stabbed, but she was able to escape and call for help. The third worker escaped through a back door uninjured. The affidavit said police were able to identify Campbell using computer records and surveillance video. He was taken into custody just a few days later on a murder charge. One question investigators are still left with today is why. Chief William McManus saying the brutal attack appeared to be random. Justice for O'Regan's death has yet to be served. Campbell's next court hearing is scheduled for September 10th. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Hey there, Robert Larson here. You know, with Simply Safe, you get comprehensive, professionally monitored home security without having to leave your house or have anyone to come install it. You simply order it online, it gets delivered to your door, and you can set it up yourself in just a few minutes. Imagine that. So take it from an expert. Get Simply Safe and protect your home, your family, and anything else you need to keep a close eye on. What makes Febreze Air Effects different? While cheaper aerosols rely on artificial propellants, Febreze uses a 100% natural propellant. Check it out. Pressure created by what's in your air makes the bottle spray, which means freshness everyone will love. Febreze. Had enough? No. Arthritis. Here. New Aspercream Arthritis. Prescription strength reduces inflammation. Thank the gods. Don't thank them too soon. Kick pain in the asper cream. Facebook is bringing back audio and video calling to its main app. ABC's Motocrossar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Facebook is bringing audio and video calls back to its main app. This coming almost seven years after the social media giant introduced the Messenger app for the same purpose. It's considered a test for now and is already available to some users. No more swiping up on Instagram soon. The platform is retiring the feature that allows you to swipe up to visit external web pages. Instead, there will be tappable link stickers. Unlike swiping up, viewers will be able to respond to stories that have a sticker. And billionaire Richard Branson is showing off his vision for a high-speed transportation system. Branson unveiled the concept for Virgin's Hyperloop, which he says will send people between cities and tubes at 600 miles per hour. Virgin hopes to begin commercial operations in 2027. Sign me up. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. It's now 517 on your Tuesday. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Things looked pretty quiet last time I checked those TransGuy cameras. Yeah, you know, I'm glad you're helping keep an eye on that stuff. Uh, we have been seeing a few quiet shots here at TransGuy, although US 90 at Montgomery does have some flashing lights. And as we mentioned to you that there is some construction going on out there. And we will get to that in just a moment. While the shots at TransGuy have looked pretty good, uh, we do have a crash that just came up in our system off I-35 southbound in Nogalitos is where TxDOT is reporting that crash. Right now, still early enough to where we're not seeing any delays with traffic, so that's a good sign right now. But uh, taking you over to that construction that is happening right here off US 90. It's in those westbound lanes of Grossenbacher Road. Uh, as you did see, some of those units out there are check stock trucks. Uh, traffic is slowing down right now. We're moving at 36 miles per hour, uh, but it does appear that they could be wrapping that up uh, pretty soon right now, so it shouldn't have any big impact on that morning drive. But as we're looking at the screen, or the green on the screen, that's what we like to see if you're going to get your day started early with us. No real big issues out right now. We are going to try to work with our friends at TransGuy to get a shot of that crash off 35. But right now, just take it easy if you're going to be traveling through US 90. Uh, this is the shot at Montgomery, but that construction should be wrapping up pretty soon, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Mike, four years ago today, I posted on Facebook. Good morning. The forecast is a game changer for many South Texans. Harvey is the real deal and a real danger. The KSAT weather team will have frequent updates from now until the storm has passed. August 24th. 2017 and because uh, Justin Horn and I and everybody we were talking about that just uh, the other day because it had formed up in the Eastern Caribbean. It had been tracked for a long was, time. It was working its way across and it's like, yeah, this looks like it's going to and then it sort of I think I believe it died down a little bit as it hit the Yucatan and then sat there in the uh, Bay of Campeche. Yeah. yeah, so wow, that's been four years yep. already. Hard to believe. All right, here's one of those pictures just because it is pretty little butterfly <laughs> and on a beautiful flower right there.
Thank you very much for the KSAT Connect picture. Got a lot of clouds hanging around here, and uh, we'll see more sunshine later on this afternoon. All right, Climate Prediction Center, and this is interesting. It has the 60 to 10 day outlook, the end of the month and the first couple of days of September, and this would be no real anomaly as far as high temperatures, which would keep us right around, say, mid or even leaning toward the uh, lower 90s, about 94 or so for a, a normal high temperature, but it also has better than average odds of some rain around here to finish up the month and go into the first of September. Then you jump ahead a little bit further and go to the eight to 14 day outlook and same thing. Temperatures are no real anomaly as far as the, uh, the high temperatures are concerned or the temperatures average and about where you would expect and also a slightly better than average chance for some rain around here. So that's encouraging as far as getting some more rain down the road. Yesterday, 96, same thing in Hondo, 98 Pleasanton. We did have triple digits, of course. Same thing again today. Temperatures are going to be a couple to three degrees or so above the average high temperature, which right now is 95 degrees. And that's going to be the situation. Everybody's going to be pretty much in the same boat later on today. And of course, we will have the heat index to deal with. And obviously, it's going to be higher down to the south and down to the, uh, the southeast. And this despite the fact that, yes, we will see somewhat of a drop in the humidity later on this afternoon dew points will go down that usual 24 hour cycle. But when you get those temperatures mid and upper 90s, it doesn't take much humidity to put that heat index about what, three, four or five degrees above what it actually the air temperature. And so that's what it's going to be feeling like. Humidity will come back up tomorrow morning and then drop down once again in the afternoon. So here's the high, which is now dominating things, which has been saying is has not been in its usual spot, which is right here throughout most of the summer. And that's why temperatures have not been all that hot in the past couple of months. It's going to start to kind of edge its way up to the north. And as it does, it sort of takes that lid off the atmosphere because right now it's suppressing really any showers or storms from trying to develop. But as it moves on out of here and you get more moisture coming in here with this flow off the Gulf, you get more chances for maybe a shower to pop up, a sea breeze shower, one or two of them to move a little further inland. And that'll be the situation Thursday and then also going into Friday. And we'll start to see some waves move on in here over the weekend. That's going to help to increase rain chances. And then that low is going to be moving from the Caribbean into the Gulf. And that's going to give us better rain chances as we go into Sunday and then the, the first part of next week. And as the as far as the exact path of it, Still a week away. That's still something we got to keep a close eye on. 88 degrees today at noon. Partly cloudy skies. High temperature is going to be up to 97. Mostly sunny skies. Heat index up into the hundreds, of course. Same thing tomorrow. One or two showers Thursday. Three or four showers Friday, if you will. A little bit better rain chances in the weekend and going into the first part of next week. And slightly lower temperatures as well. Thanks, Mike. Right now, 522, about 78 degrees. And what do the Beatles archives and the Young Filmmakers Contest have in common? Treasures waiting to be discovered. Coming up, details about Paul McCarty, McCartney's memoir. The Lyrics is an upcoming Paul McCartney memoir of sorts, described by the publisher as a self-portrait in 154 songs. One of those songs is an unrecorded Beatles tune, Tell Me Who He Is. The never-before-seen handwritten lyrics were discovered in one of McCartney's old notebooks. The book, based on McCartney's conversations with Irish poet Paul Muldoon, is due out November 2nd. Because it's there, and the fun stuff, hard stuff, the waiting for the bus stuff, with the people you know and the things that you do. That great stories are waiting to be found. Adobe and Netflix have launched The Great Untold. More than 16,000 young creators from across the U.S. applied, and the three winners from Alaska, Virginia, and North Carolina will each get the backing to make a short film, along with a mentor, a two-week virtual film boot camp, and a $10,000 grant. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 526, still about 78 degrees. An update on the recovery within the local hotel industry. Still ahead on GMSA, the improvements we're seeing when compared to other major cities. The FDA is warning people not to use an animal medicine to treat COVID. Still ahead, what the agency said in a recent Twitter post. Plus, a program aiming to reduce taxpayer costs while providing a more transparent way 
to indigenous defense, to a way that indigenous defense is conducted. Our Eric Hernandez explains how the MAC system works. As many San Antonio area students return to the classroom, lots of parents may be struggling to get their kids to shift to a normal sleep routine. Ahead on GMSA, a local sleep specialist joins us live with advice. Making headlines this morning, the Pfizer vaccine gets full FDA approval, but there's still more questions that need to be answered. We're breaking them down just ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 78 degrees. That's pretty tolerable right now. We'll be hitting the mid to upper 90s later this afternoon. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday, August 24th, and a special good morning to Comal ISD starting classes today. That's right. Have a great school year and this afternoon by pickup time, just, you know, be prepared to be a little warm. We all know what to expect now, Mike Osterhage. Yeah, you know, if you're in the shadows, in the shade, it's tolerable, but but boy, you get out in that direct sun and it is just blisteringly hot and that's going to stay that way for the next couple of days. 79 right now, so we're about four above normal. You know, yesterday a little more comfortable, but now the humidity is back up as well. And uh, yeah, it's it's warm and humid out there and it's going to stay that way. We will see somewhat of a drop in the humidity later on this afternoon, but still enough of it out there to put the heat index up into the low hundreds throughout much of the area. Don't have a lot of moisture aloft in the atmosphere, this gray shade, the water vapor imagery. And so therefore, once we get rid of like the past couple of days, get rid of the low morning clouds, going to have plenty of sunshine out there with a few clouds kind of smattered about here and there. So if one of those clouds kind of comes over and sits on top of you. Provide some nice shade. Mold is on the low side. CPS Energy is asking if you can reduce your energy usage between 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. That would help out. And throughout the rest of today, 88 at noon and, yep, 97. We hit 96 yesterday, still above normal. The average normal high temperature is 95 degrees and plenty of sunshine. We're just going to kind of cut and paste this into tomorrow. Then Thursday may actually see a stray shower here and there, especially off to the east couple more of those Friday and that rain chance will creep upwards as we go on into the weekend and some better rain chances then later in the weekend and the first part of next week. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything big going on out there? Right now the biggest thing, Mike, is going to be this crash that we have reported here off 35 at Powell's a shot from Transguide and let's go ahead and wait for our system to show us what we're looking at right now. Several flashing lights out there and when we get to it, here we go, uh, it does look like we uh, this could be on the axis road of 35 and we do have a few first responders out there on the scene and some road flares as well. So obviously indicating that there is some closures out there as first responders do work to clear that up. And right now again, Texas does report this off I 35 southbound and Ogolitos. That shot was from 35 at Powell Street. We're going to be watching that closely and see how that does impact this morning commute. But right now things have been pretty green on the screen. Uh, that slowdown that we talked about out towards 90 westbound and Castroville has since cleared out. There was some construction going on out there a little bit earlier, but it does look like that has since been cleared out and right now the roads are looking pretty smooth so far. Inbound times also look really good if you're coming in from Seguin, pretty green on I-10 with 28 minutes, 22 minutes of coming in from Lavernia and 87. And right now, if you are traveling in from Floridasville, 29 minutes at this hour. One last look at this scene at 35 at Powell. We're going to be watching it closely and see how again it does imp if it does impact your morning commute. Mark Stephanie. All right, thank you, Stephen. New this morning, one man is in the hospital after he was shot while walking to a gas station. It happened around 1030 last night in the 300 block of North Zarzamora. That's on the city's west side. Police tell us the victim was walking to a gas station when someone drove by and started shooting. The man was hit in the leg but was able to call for help. He was taken to University Hospital. It is called Managed Assigned Council, and it's described as the complete overhaul of the criminal justice system right here in Bear County also known as the MAC system. It goes into effect this fall. The aim is to reduce taxpayer costs while providing a more transparent way to provide a defense to the indigent. Erica Hernandez explains how it'll work. 80% of people that get arrested in Bear County are indigent, which means eight out of 10 people get a court appointed attorney. That in turn costs the county about $15 million a year for indigent defense. That is why the MAC system was presented by Administrative Judge Ron Rahel as a solution. Currently, we don't have any metrics to see where the money goes. We don't have an understanding as to how to improve the system. The MAC system was approved by Commissioner's Court in early June and will receive 80% of its funding from the Texas Indigent Defense Commission. 
The system, which will be made up of an independent department of executive board members and staff, will do many things like track the amount of cases court-appointed attorneys have assigned, provide more resources to those in need, take the appointment of court-appointed attorneys out of judges' hands, and make sure those court-appointed attorneys are doing a good job. Attorneys are going to be supervised and looked over by a managed assigned counsel program that is outside of the judge's hands that is going to ensure that fairness exists across the board as it relates to representation. While other MAC systems do exist in other counties, this is the first one that is a complete overhaul on felony, misdemeanor, and juvenile cases. The system, um, it's been referred to as a once-in-a-lifetime change in the criminal justice system. It is a reform. Uh, it's going to make criminal justice more accountable to the people. The MAC system will officially launch on October 1st of this year. For more on this story, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. And we have an update on the recovery of the local hotel industry. Visit San Antonio is reporting that we haven't quite reached the numbers we saw in 2019. However, we are seeing improvements, especially when compared to other major cities. In July of 2019, hotels in the area had an occupancy rate of 76.6%. This year, there's been a consistent increase with July just 3.5% shy of what San Antonio experienced pre-pandemic. While many not have not beat our benchmark. The hotel industry here at home is doing better than the competition. The president and CEO of Visit San Antonio says there's been a push to get visitors near and far. For the first time in a very long time, we ran a local campaign to get local San Antonios to come down to San Antonio to enjoy our hotels, our attractions, our tours, etc. And while they say occupancy isn't up to the level it was at 2019, Visit San Antonio says revenue is better now. The average daily rate for rooms in July increased by nearly $20 compared to July of 2019. And still, Visit San Antonio noted that two conferences have been canceled in recent days. The group says there is a proactive effort to keep other scheduled conferences in San Antonio by explaining the safety protocols in place for those events. Pfizer, the uh, Pfizer gets the thumbs up rather full FDA approval of this COVID-19 vaccine plus a new name. I believe it's called Comirnaty. Experts say it's a step in the right direction in the fight against the virus, but the work on vaccines continues, which brings up some new questions. Seniors Britt Conway breaks down a few of your FAQs. The moment you've been waiting for is here. The FDA has spoken. The vaccine is safe and effective. It's within our power to get this under control. Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine now has the FDA's official stamp of approval for people 16 years and older. We have more data about efficacy and safety than almost any other vaccine in the history of vaccination. What could the approval mean for vaccine mandates? They're gonna give a lot of incentive and backing for a lot of institutions and organizations and places of employment to mandate. We certainly expect there will be more uh, mandates uh, for factions of federal employees. What about a vaccine specifically for the Delta variant? Pfizer says it's got one in the works just in case. Booster shot of the current vaccine is very, very, very effective against Delta, but we cannot take that chance. What's the latest on vaccines for kids 11 and younger? We just have to wait for the data to be complete. That includes data on safety and effectiveness. The companies will be able to present the data to the CDC by the mid fall or so. Then the FDA will either make the vaccine available under EUA or wait a little longer for full approval. And you're all done. Every shot, a step in the right direction. I hope we could start to get some good control in the spring of 2022. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The battle against the coronavirus is being fought on two fronts, one against the virus itself and the other against misinformation. Over the weekend, the Food and Drug Administration issued a warning on Twitter. You are not a horse. You are not a cow. Seriously, y'all stop it. It comes as Americans are being persuaded to reach for disproven treatments such as ivermectin, an anti-parasitic typically used in livestock to treat or ward off COVID-19. In March, the FDA said that taking large doses of ivermectin is dangerous and could cause serious harm. And time now is 539 and it's about 78 degrees out there. Well, the tropics are heating up as we enter the peak of the hurricane season. Up next, we have some key things you need to remember to prepare now so you do not get caught off guard later.
And the U.S. marked its biggest day of airless from Afghanistan. How many evacuees, the White House says, were brought to safety? Outside with live cam. 78 degrees at the airport, lots of morning clouds. And Mike is eyeing some rainfall chances this weekend. We'll get an update coming up. And welcome back. It's 542. In your morning headlines, the U.S. military flying around the clock have managed their biggest day of airlifts out of Afghanistan by far. But deadly violence that has blocked many desperate Red Afghans and foreigners from entering Kabul's airport persisted on Monday. Meanwhile, the Taliban signaled they may insist on the airlifts ending at the end of the month. The White House says 28 U.S. military flights carried about 10,400 people to safety over the 24 hours that ended early Monday morning. Texas Republicans are bringing back their voting bill with no changes. This comes as some Democrats return to the Capitol for the first time since ending their holdout. It was clear during a House hearing yesterday the bill is on track to become law after the Democrats' 38-day walkout. Dozens of people showed up to testify before lawmakers seized their last chance for public input on the bill that will tighten voting rules. And a man who helped Rudy Giuliani try to find damaging information about President Joe Biden in Ukraine is expected to plead guilty. Igor Fruman was charged in 2019 with arranging illegal donations while trying to get Americans interested in investigating Biden's son in Ukraine. A court filing yesterday says a hearing is scheduled for tomorrow for Fruman to change his plea in that case. He previously pleaded not guilty. Back here at home on your Tuesday morning, 543, about 78 degrees. Peak hurricane season is here, and even though we're fairly far from the coast, a strong tropical storm could still cause some big problems here in San Antonio. We're going to explain how you can prepare next. And welcome back. It's 546. Peak hurricane season is here with meteorologists predicting a flurry of storms between now and mid-October. And as RJ Mark has explained, even though we're fairly far from the coast, a strong tropical system could still cause us big problems here in San Antonio. Whether you're weathering a tropical system or just your typical severe thunderstorm, there are steps you can take now to ensure you're ready for anything. First, you'll want to think ahead in case you have to evacuate your home, especially during a flood. There's a lot to consider, both inside and out. You'll want to store loose items, like grills and bikes, and protect the doors and windows. But often, the biggest opening to houses, the garage door, is overlooked. Have a plan for bracing the garage door to keep it from falling and depressurizing the rest of the house. And now is the time to take stock of what's inside the house. Take pictures of not only the big items like TVs and appliances, but also of clothing. That way, you have proof of the amount of clothing in any particular closet for your insurer. Keep in mind, we're only about 150 miles from the coast and tropical systems can be large. A direct hit from a hurricane could have catastrophic effects on San Antonio and the South Texas area. Be sure to download the KSAT Weather Authority app to make sure you're prepared with breaking hurricane updates, push alerts, and state-of-the-art tracking with the KSAT 12 weather team. It's available right now for free in the Apple App Store and Google Play. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. In your morning consumer news, the price of crude oil is down to $62 a barrel. That's the lowest price since May, according to AAA. Drop comes as demand for gasoline slows down. It's worrying investors who fear it may go even lower as COVID infections go up because fewer people will travel. That means gasoline prices could also drop if demand for crude continues to decline. The current price per barrel still far more compared to roughly a year ago when prices fell to negative territory at the very beginning of the pandemic. Billionaire Richard Branson's space-focused startup is set to go. Virgin Orbit will make its stock market debut by the end of the year. The company's space missions are centered on launching small satellites into space. According to public filings posted on Monday, Virgin Orbit has about $300 million worth of contracts already lined up. The company broke off from Virgin Galactic back in 2017. Insane Clown Posse has announced a farewell tour. The news comes after the group's leader, Violent J, revealed he was recently diagnosed with a heart condition involving abnormal heart rhythm. Final tour next year will be in the U.S., Europe, Canada, and Australia. 
And we're looking at some flashing lights at Highway 90. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, everybody. That's right. Uh, we do have these flashing lights here for US 90 at Montgomery, and that's because some traffic still being, uh, pardon me, some construction still being reported out there. We told you about this a little bit earlier in the newscast. Was causing some delays, but that had cleared out. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our maps in just a moment. Uh, but we do want to tell you something that has cleared out is that crash we showed you earlier off I-35 southbound at Nogalito. It's just some road flares still out there, so uh, something to watch out for. But uh, that traffic, as we mentioned, off US 90 westbound, where that uh, construction is taking place, is picking up, slowing down right now, and hopefully that won't be impacting anybody's morning drive time. But right now, uh, things have been looking pretty good. That crash, again, has cleared out off 35 at Nogalito. So right now, you shouldn't expect any issues out on the roadways and plenty of time to head to the gas station. If you can see our gas prices with AAA right now, they're reporting the average gas price in Bear County, 263 around the state. We are looking at 280 and around the country, around 350. And this has kind of been fluctuating, but overall, uh, tech, uh, AAA did report that the highest gas price we saw this year was around 319 for that average gas price. So some news for you if you're heading to the pump, but still have this construction out here off US 90 at Montgomery. Flashing lights to be on the lookout for. Be sure to move over, move over and slow down for those tech stock crews out there. Yes, sir. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, thank you. That's an interesting pool there. I love that picture. Right? I mean, yeah the glow of the pool, the glow of the moonlight, and also the angles to it and everything. The beautiful night in Bernie. Yeah, very, very pretty. And that's the thing, you know, with the clouds that have been getting on out of here pretty much late in the afternoon and then going into the evening hours, it has been pretty good moon gazing weather as we are now in the waning gibbous moon. The full moon, of course, was just uh, a couple of days ago. This morning, though, not going to see any, uh, any moon stars or really a great sunrise. We'll probably have a couple of breaks in the clouds here and there as the sun is coming up like the past couple of mornings and they'll fill in and obviously clouds are going to be breaking up as the the morning rolls on. All right, looks like we're going to be getting another batch of some African dust coming on in here in the next uh, couple of days and it's the trade winds coming across the Atlantic Ocean. Same trade winds that take those disturbances off the uh, African coast and throw them on in here that can become tropical systems. Same thing that's pulling that African dust in. So by Thursday, it looks like most of the uh, Gulf is going to be covered in some African dust and then that's going to continue to work its way in here. So it does look like it's going to provide for some very spectacular sunsets, obviously, with that, that extra particulates in the atmosphere, and that tends to enhance the oranges and the reds of the uh, sunsets, and that's going to stick around through much of the weekend and maybe then another little batch of it coming in here by next week. Also, we're going to have to keep an eye, obviously, on the tropics for any uh, sort of development, especially going in toward the weekend and the first part of next week. 79 right now, 75 Port SA and 79 up the road in Canyon Lake, and then the humidity dew points are mid-70s on average, so you get around 74 75s. That's kind of fog up your glasses sort of humidity. So we do have somewhat of a heat index to deal with as of right now. And actually these dew points compared to yesterday. Now this doesn't seem like a lot, you know, two, three degrees or so, but it is noticeable when you step outside with that extra humidity out there. And that's going to be uh, sticking around here. So as far as uh, the forecast for any uh, sort of precipitation, nothing the next couple of days, just a lot of heat and humidity. By Thursday, a couple of showers going to be possible popping up here and there. Friday and then going into the weekend, we'll have primarily off to the east, but even a few more trying to move on in here. Better chances probably later in on Sunday and then going into the first part of next week. And of course, this model has a uh, disturbance developing there in the Gulf of Mexico, staying down to the south of us. Another computer model has it staying well up to the north of us. So that's the track of it. Obviously going to have to uh, keep a close eye on 88 degrees, partly cloudy skies today at noon, high temperature up to 97. So once again, we're on the above normal side, heat index into the low hundreds, and then we are going to be up uh, same situation tomorrow and slightly lower temperatures going into the weekend. A couple of rain chances, rain chances will go up ever so slightly as we go into the weekend, the first part of next week. Steph, Mark. We like to see those rain chances go up. Thanks, Mike. 553, about 78 degrees. New attraction coming to Sea World San Antonio. Coming up next, details on what riders can expect. But next, you can expect your lottery numbers. <laughs> Pick three numbers, 959, nine, Fireball 6, Daily 4, 5946, nine, Fireball 8. Cash 5, 12, 16, 19, 24, 28. And your Texas two-step, 1, 2, 4, 29, bonus ball 31.
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, a major breakthrough in the fight against COVID. The FDA fully approving the Pfizer vaccine. You can hear all the applause there. Well, this morning, what that means for starting booster shots and what it could mean for getting your children vaccinated. Plus, the vaccine mandates that are already in place for some cities, school districts, and businesses around the country. Dr. Francis Collins, the NIH director, joining us live to answer the big questions. You'll see that and so much more right here on GMA. If you are a thrill junkie, and yes, I'm talking to you, SeaWorld San Antonio is adding, quote, the largest attraction of its kind in the world next spring. The tidal surge is set to be, quote, the world's tallest and fastest screaming swing, end quote. Right now on KSAT.com, you can see a preview of what the ride will look like when it's up and running. Season passes for SeaWorld 2022 are now on sale. Glad you're with us on this Tuesday morning. Coming up at our next hour, the very latest on an overnight shooting near Castle Hills. A man was taken to the hospital. Plus, Airbnb making a big move to help with the crisis in Afghanistan. We will explain. And do you have a child struggling to get back to their back to school sleep schedule? I know some of you are. We'll talk with a local pediatric sleep specialist live to see how they may be able to help. An argument turns into a shooting at a West Side gas station. One person is now in the hospital. We'll have the very latest. And it was a brutal barbershop murder. We had the details in our South Texas Crime Story series. Outside with live cam, lots of morning low clouds, tons of humidity. There is a chance of rain in the extended forecast. We'll get updated on those percentages. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is a back to school Tuesday, August 24th. Happy back to school. Happy Tuesday and hope you had a great Monday. Uh, thank you for starting your morning with us. It is another big day for students in our viewing area. Comal ISD welcoming students back on campus this morning for the first day of classes. And when it comes to all your back to school information that you need, you can check out KSET.com. We have everything you need to know regarding the most recent information on masking, mental health for students, and information on homeschooling. It's all available right now <coughs> on KSET.com. Well, Mike joins us with a yes. back to school forecast for this Tuesday morning, and then we're guessing it's more of the same. Yep, it's going to be hot again. Where it, yesterday wasn't quite as bad in the morning. Yeah. You know, it was a little little bit more pleasant. Now the humidity is really starting to kind of creep <laughs> back into the picture and that's going to continue to be the case over the next few days. But with the extra humidity and some changes that will eventually lead to some rain chances by the mm, end of the week and more likely the weekend. But today it's just going to be hot and humid. We have a heat index right now. It feels like 82 when you step outside 81 in Catula, 74 up the road in New Braunfels and mold is on the low side. Also in it is a uh, CPS Energy peak energy demand day. So if you can lower your energy usage between 2 and 7 p.m. this afternoon, that would help out. Temperatures, we, well, we we're a little bit lower earlier, and now we're in kind of stuck in the mid to upper 70s, but um, temperatures really won't be going that much lower from where they are right now. We'll have morning clouds around, and those will continue to break up, and a few of them left over throughout the, the noontime, 88 degrees, and sort of that smattering of clouds like we had around yesterday, but still plenty of sunshine enough to get temperatures well up into the mid to upper 90s. Of course, it's going to feel like the low hundreds. Do it all over again tomorrow, Thursday, one or two showers out there. We'll start to see just a one or two of them here and there, but then those rain chances will continue to uh, go up slowly as we go on into the weekend. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, and I see a couple of flashing lights out there. Yeah, uh, construction still going on out there, Mike. Uh, it's been going on a little, pretty much a little bit over an hour now that we've been seeing it here from the shot at Transguide. As you can see that there are some of those flashing lights out there. Textile crews working to improve the roads here off US 90, which is leading to a little bit of a slowdown there. Uh, it's near Grossenbacher out towards Cashville in those westbound lanes of US 90. Uh, right now we do know that construction is still happening. Uh, it's been leading to some delays right now or slowdowns. We should say uh, those slowdowns have been picking up and slowing down again, but we're watching those westbound lanes close again. This is going westbound out toward Castroville, uh, but taking a look right now at the inbound times. If you are going to be traveling in from uh, the eastbound lanes on US 90, it's just 19 minutes right now to the downtown San Antonio area. So those eastbound lanes are not affected. It's still pretty green on the screen. 16 minutes from Lytle on 35, and we do have 28 minutes right now on 37 coming in from Pleasant. Uh, but taking one last look at trans guide. Uh, we're going to be watching this pretty closely and keeping our eye on the roads and see how your morning drive is going to be shaping up. Mark Stephanie. 
Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police are trying to piece together an overnight shooting near Castle Hills. It happened around 2 this morning at the Sugars nightclub in the 2700 block of Northwest Loop 410. Now, officers say that a man walked out into the parking lot there and saw three men roughhousing. They say that's when shots were fired, hitting one man in the shoulder. The other men took off but were quickly detained. The man who was hit was taken to the hospital and is expected to be OK. Now to the coronavirus numbers here in San Antonio. Hospitalizations remain on the rise. 90% of cases reported now among the unvaccinated at hospitals. This morning, 1,466 COVID patients are in local hospitals. 412 are in the intensive care. 279 are listed as being on ventilators. This morning, FDA approved the virus vaccine, uh, actually the Pfizer vaccine. I read that wrong, my apologies. And health officials are hoping the more rigorous approval process convinces more Americans to get the vaccine. This as the U.S. is now reporting more than 137,000 new COVID cases a day. ABC's Dan Lieberman has the very latest. This morning, Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine now fully approved by the FDA. This Ohio woman finally getting the shot after waiting for that approval. I was scared to get the COVID shot. Officials hoping the FDA approval will give reassurance to about 82 million eligible but still unvaccinated people in this country to get the shot. The FDA director declaring the approval process extremely rigorous. We've heard false claims that thousands of people have died from the vaccine. Let me be clear, these claims are simply not true. Getting a COVID-19 vaccine can save your life. The White House saying businesses and institutions should now have the confidence to issue vaccine mandates. If you're a business leader, a nonprofit leader, a state or local leader, I call on you now to do that, require it. The Pentagon preparing to require the shot for more than 1.3 million active duty troops. New York City mandating the vaccine for all school employees. And in California, college students now required to get their shots before attending in-person classes. The call to get vaccinated more urgent than ever as more Americans die of COVID, some 738 every day now. Before we intubate them, almost their last words are begging us for a vaccine. By that time, it's already too late. As children head back to the classroom, the CDC director telling ABC News more data is still needed before kids under 12 can get the shot, maybe by November. The best way to keep our children under the age of 12 safe is to vaccinate all the people who are around them um, and to have them wear masks when they attend schools. Dan Lieberman, ABC News, New York. Some a big rallies on Wall Street, and it was thanks in part to the FDA granting full approval of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. The Nasdaq closed at an all-time high, gaining more than 1.5%, but as encouraging as those numbers are, one survey shows economic expansion is slowing down. The survey from IHS Market shows the services sector activity dropped in August. Factory activity also fell. That may be because consumers are canceling plans and workplaces and universities are postponing in-person activity due to the rise in cases. But there's good news for the housing market showing signs of strength. Strength according to the National Association of Retailers. Home sales rose 2% in July. I think this is actually the wrong video. Uh, inventory of homes, Stephanie, for sales also on the rise, actually at its highest level since October. Some good news. Restaurants are also seeing staffing shortages in a study from Black Box Intelligence and Snag a Job wages rose by 10 percent, but vacancies and turnover rates are high. The study says workers are looking for other opportunities with better hours and benefits. And it was a brutal murder that shocked many people last year. It all happened inside a barber shop. A transgender woman dead and another woman left severely injured. Eric Hernandez takes a look back at the incident in the latest South Texas crime stories. We do want to warn you, details of the crime may be disturbing for some viewers. It was broad daylight on May 6 of last year when San Antonio police say a 20-year-old transgender woman was killed at a Northwest Side barber shop. At the height of the coronavirus pandemic, officers say 42-year-old Damien Campbell walked inside a diesel barber shop on Bandera Road near Loop 1604. According to an arrest affidavit, three staff members were inside the shop, preparing to reopen after being shut down due to the pandemic. Details from that affidavit reveal that Campbell walked in to ask about making an appointment. 
He told staff he had to go back outside to get a credit card, but came back with a backpack, gun, and knife. That's when witnesses told police Campbell ordered the workers to the back of the shop. Allegedly, he choked Helly J. O'Regan until she was unconscious, then stabbed her to death. Investigators say a second employee also was stabbed, but she was able to escape and call for help. The third worker escaped through a back door uninjured. The affidavit said police were able to identify Campbell using computer records and surveillance video. He was taken into custody just a few days later on a murder charge. One question investigators are still left with today is why. Chief William McManus saying the brutal attack appeared to be random. Justice for O'Regan's death has yet to be served. Campbell's next court hearing is scheduled for September 10th. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. It's now 6.09, about 78 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, two high-powered high school football teams are set to do battle this Friday night. I believe that's the wrong video. We're going to have a preview of that, though. Outside with live cam. Taking a look at downtown, lots of morning clouds in place, and we know those will burn off later. How hot will it get later today? Mike will tell you. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Now to morning sports, you can add the Cowboys' C.D. Lamb to the list of those now in COVID protocols, and the talented receiver isn't alone. He's joined by defensive backs Malik Hooker and Israel Mukayamu. That's after new defensive coordinator Dan Quinn and defensive tackle Carlos Watkins had to leave AT&T Stadium right before kickoff of Saturday's 20-14 preseason loss to the Texans due to health and safety protocols. Now to high school football here in San Antonio. Brennan and Reagan will battle out in a highly anticipated matchup this Friday. The Brennan Bears coached by Stephen Besori. Welcome back. 14 starters, eight on offense, six on defense from a team that finished 10 and two, seven and one in district. Texas Football Magazine ranks the Bears at number 17 in the state in Class 6A. Right behind them is number 17, Reagan Rattlers. As a matter of fact, head coach Lyndon Hamilton has 14 starters back as well. Seven each on offense and defense and a team that went 9-2 and two last year. Running the table in District 28-6A at 8-0. and oh. All adds up to one heck of a season opener Friday night. Kickoff will be at 7 p.m. at Ferris Stadium. Madison Mavericks are taking on the Clemens Buffaloes at Lenhoff Stadium this Thursday night. Mavericks returning 16 starters, eight each on offense and defense for head coach Blaine Peterson off a team that made it to the playoffs after going five and three in the very difficult District 28-6A. For the Clemens Buffaloes, head coach Jared Johnson has 11 starters returning, mainly on defense, with eight off a team that did not make the playoffs last year. Kickoff Thursday night at 7. You can watch it live on MeTV. Here are some of the other games we'll be bringing you on MeTV this season. For more high school football coverage, head on over to KSAT.com. And there is some construction out there early this morning. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Uh, we still have those flashing lights out there. Mark, Seth at US 90. And we'll get you that shot here on the Trans Guide Rotator in just a moment. But Loop 410 at Broadway, there it is. US 90 at Montgomery, where that construction is taking place in those westbound lanes just near Grossenbacher. But overall, the morning has been shaping up to be pretty nice. Getting a few more folks out on the roadways here off Loop 410 at Marbach, 1604 at Houseman. Uh, getting a little bit busier now that we are in uh, a little bit closer to 7 a.m. and inching closer to that morning rush hour travel. Uh, but uh, something to be able to look out for the San Antonio fire page did report a crash out near the airport of 281 southbound at D Howard way again. That is near the airport, but the tech stop page has not reported one just yet. For now, we're going to say just an incident to possibly be on the lookout for. We'll be watching that closely if you're going to be heading out toward the airport in the next few moments. Uh, but a stalled vehicle reported here off I-35 northbound at North Weedner Road, not causing any delays right now, despite the fact that it is getting a little busier out on the roadways. Overall, the morning has been shaping up to be pretty nice. We did have that crash a little bit earlier off 35 southbound near Nogalitos that has since cleared out, uh, but still seeing some residual slowdowns there off of 90 westbound where that construction is taking place. We're watching things closely here at Loop 410 at Jackson Keller, but it looks like we're off to a pretty good start so far. Thank you, Stephen. It looks like a slightly more humid wait at the bus stop. This yeah, Slightly. humidity's come up and it's going to be sticking around, especially in the mornings for the next mm -hmm. couple of days. But with the extra humidity, especially as we go into the latter part of the week and toward the weekend, that's going to help out with some some increasing. Well, 
going from zero to a little bit of a chance of rain this morning. Uh, temperature is going to be in the mid upper 70s around much of the area, and then mid and upper 90s later on today. And of course, that doesn't even take into account the humidity, even though it will drop down. It's still going to be enough to uh, make it feel like the low hundreds. And of course, that's in the shade standing out there in the bright sunshine. And boy, oh boy, it is going to be even toastier. Great picture. And I love this. Uh, a bee decided to uh, photo bomb the picture there. <laughs> it's a great shot, though. Look at how beautiful that great color, that yellow on there. That's fantastic. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect shot. And yeah, the sun is trying to lighten things up a little bit, but we still got those plenty of clouds out there. And uh, temperatures in the hill country right now, 72, Kerrville, Rock Springs, Fredericksburg, all across the board. And of course, we're staying in the upper 70s right now. All right, tropics, as you would expect, because we are approaching the peak of the season, which is the about the second week of September. We've got a couple of areas of interest that the uh, Hurricane Center is watching. One down here in the eastern Gulf of Mexico out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and then one that's also closer to uh, African right there. And those are all going to be working their way in our direction. So right now, very small chance that they would develop into something at least in the next 48 hours. But those are the three spots that the Hurricane Center is watching. All right, as time rolls on, we are going to see slightly better rain chances. The high that's been sitting on top of us is going to sort of edge away. So that'll at least allow things to try and uh, spark as far as a couple of showers. Not today, though, not tomorrow. Tomorrow, Thursday, a couple of those showers going to be possible along the, the coast, especially Friday, maybe a couple of more Saturday as well. And we're only talking maybe 20, 30 percent chance at some rain. Then we go into Sunday and that's going to tend to increase rain chances as well as well as on Monday. Now, this particular computer model keeps the center. There's a low that's going to try and work its way across the Gulf of Mexico, keeps that down to the, uh, the south of us. Then there's a different computer model and that one has that same low pressure area working its way up to the north of us. So this is where the the conflict in is is as far as the long range uh, forecast. And so that means we've got to keep a close eye on that because that's still a week away and a lot can change between now and then. So a lot of the thinking is a little further down to the uh, the south. But like I said, we continue to watch that 88 degrees, partly cloudy skies at uh, noon today. And then a high temperature gets up to 97. Of course, it's going to feel like the low hundreds, plenty of sunshine. If you have those clouds, still kind of smattered around the area like we had yesterday. Do it all again tomorrow. Thursday, a shower. Friday, a couple of showers and slightly better rain chances Saturday and Sunday. So that uh, disturbance that's going to move into the Gulf of Mexico, depending on what solution, or no, I should say no matter the solution, looks like we are going to get some uh, rain out of it and better rain chances by the first of the week. So the exact path we just keep an eye on. Well, that's why you guys talk about it so far in advance. It, it bears yeah. watching. Yeah. So, but still a week away, so. All right, well, watch and we'll hope. <laughs> a lot can change, yeah. Keep fingers crossed for rain. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 620, about 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, could we be seeing an ultra high speed mode of transportation in the near future? Details ahead. We're so embarrassed. We overpaid for this used car. We don't even want to show our faces around here. Yep, went to the wrong used car site. Remember, if you don't see me, you're not seeing the most accurate price. Shop at Carfax. You won't have to overpay on the used car again. All right, kids. Coast is clear. Wait for me. Come on, come on. Shop millions of great deals, all with a free Carfax report. Only at the all-new Carfax.com. Nicorette knows quitting smoking is freaking hard. You get advice like, try hypnosis. Or quit cold turkey. Kidding me? Instead, start small with Nicorette, which can lead to something big. Start stopping with Nicorette. Moment of truth. The dishes are clean, but are they dry? Yeah, they are. Thanks to Cascade Power Dry Rinse Aid from the number one most trusted brand. Get your dishes clean, dry, done with Cascade Detergent Plus Power Dry. 
Jeopardy. In this morning's GMA First Look, Jeopardy announcing you, Big John Bang Gilbert. Theory star Mayim Bialik as temporary of host of Jeopardy. the popular quiz show. Sony Pictures Television, the company that produces Jeopardy, telling ABC News Bialik is currently scheduled to tape three weeks of episodes, 15 episodes, adding that as we move forward with production on this season of Jeopardy, additional guest hosts will be announced. The announcement comes just days after the game show's executive producer, Mike Richards, stepped down from the permanent hosting role following inappropriate comments he made towards women on a podcast. It's going to be really, really awkward on that set for the time being. And if anything, uh, you know, it, it brings into question long term what the plan is going to be and how that show is going to be run. All that coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Janae Norman, ABC News, New York. Billionaire Richard Branson showing off his vision for high-speed transportation. He unveiled the concept for Virgin's Hyperloop. And get this, he says it'll send people between cities and tubes at 600 miles per hour. Virgin hopes to begin commercial operations in 2027. And time now is 624, and it's about 78 degrees out there. And it's a story we've been following very closely as the FDA approves Pfizer's COVID vaccine. Still to come on GMSA, why experts say it's paving the way for new mandates. And a quick look out at the roads with Trans Sky. They're 1604 at Bandera Road and 1604 at Hausman. We're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. A major move in the race to vaccinate Pfizer receives full approval from the FDA for its COVID vaccine. We're going to tell you what comes next. We know what comes next in the weather department. It's going to be another hot day across South Texas. The sun trying to come up behind those morning clouds, which will burn off. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, August 24th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you had a great Monday and it got pretty hot, but I have to say, you know, in the middle of the afternoon, it was very hot. There was a slight little tiny breeze that went by me and I was like, oh, that was so nice. Or that could have been a truck <laughs> truck passing by Stephanie at the, <laughs> that point. Good point. Were you in the shade? Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So it helped yeah. out. Yeah. Yes. Because if you're in the direct sun, yeah, you add, you know, it feels 15, 20 degrees hotter because the sun's kind of kind of cooking you, as I always say. Uh, it's going to be the same situation again today. And uh, well, we got plenty of shade right now with all those clouds. The sun was uh, coming up yet, but uh, we will have more clouds this morning, more sunshine, obviously, later on this afternoon. And yeah, we're at 78 degrees. The average normal low temperature is down to 74 right now. So we're about to four or five above normal. 74 is the dew point. So we do have more humidity out there than yesterday morning. You can definitely feel it. Mold is on the low side and and uh, CPS Energy is asking if you can turn down your energy demands later on this afternoon between 2 and 7 p.m. just to help out because a lot of folks are going to have those air conditioners just cranked up. Warm and humid this morning and sunny and hot today and something different, sunny and hot tomorrow. But then we'll start to see some minor changes by Thursday and Friday. A couple of showers here and there, especially down to the south and east down a degree or two as far as temperatures and that trend will continue going into the weekend. Temperatures will slowly drop down and rain chances are going to start to uh, come back up as we head on into the weekend. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's big out there? Anything? Hey, good morning, Mike. Uh, just as construction right now here off US 90 at Montgomery, uh, we've been showing it to you all morning long. They've been out there working out to improve the roads here, but uh, it is leading to some minor slowdowns if you're going to be traveling out for Castorville, perhaps uh, taking you to the map there. That is uh, construction is taking place there off US 90 westbound right near Grossenbacher Road. Uh, it's been going on throughout the morning. We have been seeing this uh, slowdown picking up and then it's slowing down right now. Traffic moving at 29 miles per hour out there. Just take it slow on the roads and do expect to see those tech stock crews out there uh, move over and slow down when you see those flashing lights. And uh, we do want to bring your attention still to this stall here of I-35 northbound at North Wiedner Road. It's not causing any delays right now, but check those cars before you get going here this morning and if you're going to be traveling to the downtown San Antonio area in the next few moments, things are pretty green with the exception of Lavernia 87 24 minutes, a little bit of a slowdown, nothing too major right now if you're going to be traveling in from Lavernia, but overall the commute time is looking pretty good again if you are traveling into the downtown San Antonio area later this morning roads have been shaping up to be look pretty nice, but a few more flashing lights out there off US 90. We're watching this closely. Mark Stephanie. 
Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a man's in the hospital after a shooting on the west side of town. Happened around 1030 last night in the 300 block of North Zarzamora. Police tell us a victim was walking to a gas station when someone drove by and started shooting. The man was hit in the leg but was able to call for help. He was taken to University Hospital. A former Bear County deputy has been arrested, accused of assaulting an inmate. 42-year-old Jaime Soto is charged with official oppression. Investigators say camera footage was reviewed back in December and an internal affairs investigation was then completed in June of this year. Soto resigned a few days later. He is now in custody. He was with the sheriff's office for 14 years. A big move in the battle against COVID-19. Pfizer's COVID vaccine now has the FDA's official stamp of approval for people 16 years of age and older. But work on vaccines continues. Pfizer is making a vaccine specifically for the Delta variant just in case it's needed, but says the current vaccine is very effective against a variant. And safety and efficacy data is still coming in on vaccines for kids 11 and younger. Once the FDA gets that data, they'll either make the vaccine available under uh, EUA or wait a little longer for full approval. In the meantime, this FDA approval paves the way for vaccine mandates. They're gonna give a lot of incentive and backing for a lot of institutions and organizations and places of employment to mandate. The Pfizer oh. vaccine for people 16 and up will be marketed as Comirnaty. Uh, Pfizer's vaccine approval from the FDA prompted the Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton to drop his lawsuit against the San Antonio Independent School District over its COVID-19 vaccine mandate. Paxton sued the district Thursday. However, it was dropped after Pfizer received full approval from the FDA yesterday. The Attorney General initially argued the district violated Governor Greg Abbott's executive order that prohibited governmental entities from mandating vaccines that only had emergency use authorization. More than 850 people have received monoclonal antibodies through the Regional Infusion Center at Freeman Coliseum. That's since the center opened earlier this month. The FDA emergency approved therapy is free and highly recommended for people considered high risk who recently received a positive COVID-19 test. Patients do need a doctor's referral, but those without a doctor referral can call the center's hotline to be screened over the phone. That number is on your screen right now. It's 1-800-742-5990, and you can head to ksat.com for more information. Hospital capacities continue to be tested as the coronavirus cases surge. Now a handful of Houston area emergency rooms are actually shutting down. According to our sister station KPRC in Houston, Memorial Hermann has closed three of its 24 hour emergency rooms. The convenient care centers in Kingwood, Spring and Siena are now closed until further notice. Patients who were receiving care at these ERs were transferred to another Memorial Hermann facility. Topping your morning headlines, U.S. military troops flying around the clock have managed their biggest day of airlifts out of Afghanistan. This comes as deadly violence has blocked many desperate Afghans and foreigners from entering Kabul's airport. Meanwhile, the Taliban says they may insist on the airlifts ending at the end of the month. The White House says 28 U.S. military flights carried about 10,400 people to safety over the 24 hours that ended early Monday morning. And check out this treat from the CEO of Airbnb. Just a couple hours ago, Brian Chesky said starting today, Airbnb will begin housing 20,000 Afghan refugees globally for free. End quote. He went on to call this one of the biggest humanitarian crises of our time and hopes this inspires other business leaders to step up. You can look for the latest on the crisis in Afghanistan on Good Morning America beginning at 7. Kathy Hochul is now the new governor of New York. At midnight, she took over as the state's first female governor. Democrat from Western New York already has her hands full. She's taking control following months of distractions over sexual harassment allegations against Andrew Cuomo. This comes as the state deals with a rising number of COVID cases and an economy still hurting from the pandemic. And time now is 635 and it's about 78 degrees out there. And still ahead on GMSA this morning, we've joined live by a local pediatric sleep specialist. She has some advice for parents having a hard time getting their kids into a more normal sleep routine now that we're headed back to class. And welcome back. It's about 639. All month long, we've been bringing you back to school coverage and many students in San Antonio are probably still getting adjusted to the classroom. A lot of them probably still adjusting from their summer sleep schedules as well. well welcome back Dr. Samia Ahmad, a pediatric sleep specialist from Children's Hospital of San Antonio. Good morning, Dr. Ahmad. 
Good morning. Good morning. And for many kids in San Antonio, it's only the second day of school. So this morning, a lot of parents may be struggling to get their children to shift into a normal sleep routine. How can parents identify whether their child is just being resistant or if they're suffering from a genuine sleep disorder? Oh, great question. Um, so if it's only been one to two days, it's not enough time uh, to become a sleep disorder. Uh, depending on what kind of a sleep disorder it is, um, it would have to take at least, it would have to occur about several times on most days for at least three months to meet the criteria for a sleep disorder. Uh, so I would recommend keeping up with a good sleep hygiene and the regular uh, bedtimes and wake up times. Um, in addition, keep a sleep diary to document the sleep times and how long it takes uh, your child to fall asleep. And if you still notice a problem after several weeks or months, then reach out to your doctor that, hey, you know what? I think my child might have a sleep disorder. And also remember, um, a sleep problem um, it has to be problematic to both either the caregiver or the, um, the child in order to become a sleep disorder. Dr. Mod, let's say that parents have tried just about everything to get a sleep routine going, but they haven't had luck. When should they consider sleep aids or medication? And should they maybe consider enrolling them in a sleep study? Oh, okay. So first I would recommend uh, before medication would be um, to work with light and darkness to help your child fall asleep. So dimming um, lights an hour before bedtime would promote the natural secretion of melatonin. Uh, and melatonin is the sleep-inducing hormone that's uh, secreted by the pineal gland, which is at the base of the brain. Now, if they're tired in the morning, um, I would recommend exposing the child to natural sunlight, something that we have plenty of in San Antonio. And uh, the light actually suppresses melatonin uh, secretion and therefore promotes wakefulness. Now, if the child is still sleepy, uh, parents can try using a light therapy lamp um, and have their child look at that lamp for about 15 minutes in the morning to get them up and going. Now, if these measures still don't help, over-the-counter melatonin can be tried in low doses, like about one to three milligram, 30 minutes before bedtime, and just use it for a short amount, you know, maybe a few days or a few weeks. Now, before going on to a sleep study, I would recommend evaluation um, by your doctor for other causes uh, of difficulty sleeping, um, such as things like ADHD or constipation or eczema or other medications that may be hampering your child's ability to sleep. Uh, then your doctor uh, can decide if your child needs to have a sleep study. Uh, and most often, the reason that a sleep study is ordered is if a child is snoring or, has, or stops breathing in their sleep or has disturbances in their sleep at night. And we're talking about sleep studies, one of the bigger topics on parents' minds right now. Of course, the coronavirus, and as we continue to see a uh, rise of cases here in San Antonio, there's probably parents who feel kind of uncomfortable taking their children into a hospital or doctor's office right now for that sleep study. Are, I know you talked a little bit about it, but are any alternatives you might recommend? Oh, yes. So, so there are actually lots of inter alternatives. So if you just want to talk to your sleep doctor um, uh, uh, or your own, uh, your PCP about uh, these conditions, you know, you can do a virtual visit and sleep problems are great for discussing over a virtual visit. Um, of course, a sleep study has to be done in a sleep lab. Now, adults can do a home sleep study. So if a child is like 18 and older, then, you know, they can do that home sleep apnea test. Uh, but most of the kids I think we're talking about are younger than 18. Uh, so insomnia, which is difficulty sleeping, does not actually require a sleep study for diagnosis or treatment. But other things like sleep apnea or movements in sleep uh, do warrant a sleep study. Um, like I said earlier, the most common reason for um, uh, ordering sleep studies in children is obstructive sleep apnea, also mm -hmm. known as OSA. Um, and parents... Um, uh, um, are appropriate to be, you know, concerned about risk for COVID-19 by doing a, a sleep study in a sleep lab. So OSA is when a child pauses in their breathing when they sleep, and this causes disturbed nighttime uh, sleep, and it can also have daytime repercussions like inattention and hyperactivity. And so if you have these concerns and you want to wait to get a sleep study, um, take a video of your child 
uh, sleeping uh, and show it to your doctor. Your doctor can look very carefully and see if the child is struggling to breathe or is pausing or snoring. And then your doctor may want to give you a validated questionnaire like the OSA 18, uh, which can assess your child's risk for OSA. And they may perhaps draw a few blood tests that look for inflammation that is associated okay. with OSA. Um, you can also try some over-the-counter nasal steroids and um, if that, see if that helps uh, with their sleep. All right, Dr. Ahmad from Children's Hospital of San Antonio, thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And then earlier we had some problems on Highway 90, a little bit of construction, and now it looks like things are starting to get backed up there. They, they look that way, and that's a good sign, uh, especially as morning is picking up with traffic getting out there off US 90 westbound. But uh, take a look right now. We want to bring you to our maps. We know that there's more folks on the roadway as apparent from this shot at Trans Guide, but uh, traffic is still moving pretty slow out there. US 90 westbound at Grossenbacher. Traffic right now moving around 25 miles per hour, but in that red, roughly about 12 miles per hour. But take it slow out there again. We'll move over and slow down for those tech stock crews out there working to improve the roadways. Some debris to be on the lookout for off I-10 westbound at exit 579 uh, that was detected right at Houston Street. So use some caution out there this morning. And of course, we do have our stall still to talk about this one here off I-35 northbound still at Weedner Road. Uh, use caution driving through there. Check those vehicles, especially with road getting busier. Another stall here off I-35 southbound right at Pine Street. So right now that seems to be the primary issue. Inbound time still looking really good, though, and I think we're we're going to go ahead and take one last look at Transcod US 90 at Montgomery. We're going to be watching this pretty closely. Hopefully, they'll be wrapping up pretty soon. Guys? Yes, hopefully. Thank you, Stephen. Wow. And that, yeah, it's pretty, but from a distance, yeah. you can yep. see the skyline. Yeah, beautiful view from uh, Woodlawn Lake area, Mr. McClellan, once again. And we had those smattering clouds out there yesterday. It's going to be the same situation today, starting off that way as well. A couple little breaks here in the clouds, and then they will clear on out. 78 right now. The average normal low temperature in town is 74. That's where our dew point is, which means there's a lot of humidity. I mean, 76 Castroville, 75 Canyon Lake for those dew point temperatures means, yeah, it's fog up glasses when you walk outside. So heat index right now, 80 Castroville, 81 out there at the airport. And a lot of dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, as you saw from that KSAC Connect picture. So we've got some of the clouds hanging around here and sort of the low mid levels. And then you get above that going to have beautiful blue skies, which is what that darker shade of gray indicates on the water vapor imagery. We will see a bit of a drop in the humidity by later on this afternoon, so it's not going to be steam bath weather this afternoon, but it's still going to have enough humidity. We'll still have enough humidity to uh, put the heat index readings, of course, up into the low hundreds. Humidity comes back tomorrow morning, drops down in the afternoon. Same cycle that we're going to be going through. Here's the reason why things have been hotter recently is because the high is sitting just about right on top of us. It's creating kind of a dome in the atmosphere, pushing down in the atmosphere, heating things up, suppresses any showers from trying to develop. And that'll be the case through really tomorrow. And then Thursday, as it starts to kind of move on out of here, we get a little more of a flow coming in off the Gulf of Mexico, a little more humidity. A mm, couple of showers going to be popping up here and there, especially off to the east and to the southeast. Same thing Friday, Saturday. So we're not going to have that high just sitting right on top of us. And there's going to be some little disturbances moving on through here. Then as we go into late in the weekend and the first part of next week, we're going to be watching this low to develop here. And that's going to be, uh, well, as of right now, it looks like a fairly decent rainmaker or give us a decent chance for some rain as we get on into the uh, first part of next week. So 88 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature. We get up to 97. Of course, heat index is going to be well into the uh, 100s. And then going into tomorrow, same thing. The weekend then, we are going to have uh, rain chances and improving rain chances later in the weekend and then going into next week. Mark, Steph. And thank you. Right now we want to get to some late breaking news. A crews are on the scene of a fire on the west side of town, and that's happening in the 5400 block of Enrique Barrera Parkway. All right, Katrina Weber is live. Well, good morning. Uh, it appears to be at a sports bar. The, according to the signage, it looks like the name of the bar is Reptiles, and that's where firefighters are working. When we got here, we could still see some flames coming out of the building. Uh, a lot of smoke, as you can still see, and a lot of fire trucks here still working on this fire, which is very active. Now, there is a man who uh, has, is being checked out by paramedics. According to what I was told, they did somehow pull him out of the bar. Not sure why he was in there at this hour of the morning. But uh, that man is uh, just in the custody of paramedics. 
with police standing by. Uh, he does not appear to have any serious injuries. In fact, paramedics tell me that he refused any kind of treatment. So they are just uh, keeping an eye on him. But the main uh, focus of these firefighters is to get this fire out. And again, a lot of smoke still billowing out of there. So it looks like they're still in the thick of this right now. Uh, as far as we know, no other serious injuries, just that one man who they say they did pull out of the bar. I'm trying to investigate why they think he was in there at this hour because that bar uh, was, was not open when this fire broke out, which was in the last half hour or so. So again, still everything developing here. We're gonna try to get some more information and bring it to you. Reporting live on the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. All right, time now 6.50 and about 78 degrees. So keeping San Antonio culture alive one wall at a time. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll introduce you to the group behind most of these murals coming up tomorrow on GMSA. And taking a look outside with live cam, a humid start to your day, and it's going to heat up, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed for rain at least by this weekend. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, a major breakthrough in the fight against COVID. The FDA fully approving the Pfizer vaccine. You can hear all the applause there. Well, this morning, what that means for starting booster shots and what it could mean for getting your children vaccinated. Plus, the vaccine mandates that are already in place for some city, school districts and businesses around the country. Dr. Francis Collins, the NIH director, joining us live to answer the big questions. You'll see that and so much more right here on GMA. New this morning, a Bear County jail inmate is facing more charges following the murder of another inmate over the weekend. An arrest warrant was issued Saturday for 50 year old Mark Anthony Wong, who's accused of killing Curtis Smith in a holding cell. Well, late last night, BCSO confirmed they filed a separate assault charge against Wong for attacking another inmate less than 20 minutes after Smith was killed. When asked why Wong wasn't isolated after that first attack, a BCSO spokesperson said there were no obvious signs of foul play. It wasn't until later investigators found the circumstances to be suspicious. Smith was found dead inside a booking cell on Saturday. And for now, let's go ahead and take one last look at traffic with Stephen Cavazos. Here's some good news uh, that construction out of US 90 has since cleared out uh, from the shot at Trans Guy. It looks pretty good right now, as you can see, as we're getting the morning started. Uh, that, that traffic, that construction had been going on throughout the morning, but it is since wrapped up. Still seeing some of those delays, though, right now in those westbound lanes, right at Grossenbacher Road. Traffic moving at 35 miles per hour, but I do expect that should be picking up here pretty soon now that the road is cleared. Still have this debris off I-10 westbound at exit 579 at Houston Street. Just use some caution there and of course those stalled vehicles at I-35 southbound at Pine Street. Uh, but one last look at these inbound times. They are looking pretty good with a little bit of a slowdown there off 87 in Lavernia with 24 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area. We're watching the roads closely, but Mike, will Steph's dreams of rain come true this weekend? Later on in the weekend, we do have some improving rain chances. Right now, just clouds and humid conditions. 81 is what it feels like when you step outside, when you factor in some of that humidity. 80 Castroville and we're going to make it up to 88 at noon, 97 high, but it'll feel like the low hundreds. Plenty of sunshine, few clouds out there, and then same thing tomorrow. A couple of showers here or there Thursday, Friday, and slightly improving rain chances over the weekend and somewhat lower temperatures as well. All right, again, good luck to everybody in Comal ISD starting classes today. That's right. Have a great school year, and thank you for joining us today. Have a good day. We'll see you back here at 9.